While electric cars have been grabbing all the headlines and attention of late, it's hybrid cars that are actually the stars of the show. The latest hybrid to hit the Australian market is this, the updated Kia Sorento GT Line Hybrid. It's a seven seat SUV, ideal for the family, and it goes up against the likes of Toyota Kluger and the recently announced Hyundai Santa Fe. But while its main rivals offer hybrid variants up and down the range, Kia has opted to bring in just a single highly specified model, the Sorento GT Line Hybrid. The brand is banking, gambling even if you will, on Australian buyers' appetites for nice things. So will the gamble pay off? And is the Sorento Hybrid a good car? Let's go for a drive and find out. The Kia Sorento HEV GT line, to give it its full and proper title, slots straight into the top of the broader Sorento range. It's available only in this highly specified GT line trim and with a choice of front or all-wheel drive. Pricing starts at $70,330 for front-wheel drive models, while ticking the all-wheel drive box will cost an extra $3,000. All prices are before on-road costs. As you'd expect of a range-topping GT Line model, the list of standard equipment is long and skewed towards luxury. Highlights include 19-inch alloy wheels, LED headlights, a panoramic sunroof, heated and cooled Nappa leather seating, and a 12-speaker Bose sound system. A 12.3-inch touchscreen hosts wireless, or wired, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as native satellite navigation. And underpinning the Sorento's five-star safety score, its suite of advanced driver assist and safety systems is filled to the brim with the latest technologies. Kia has thrown its full catalogue at the interior of the Sorento Hybrid. There's these beautiful leather seats with contrast piping that just look the business. The seats are heated and cooled, adjustable here, power adjustable in the front, and I can tell you after spending a week in the car, they're very comfortable on longer drives. This single frame widescreen format for the infotainment screen and the digital instrument display is all the rage these days, and Kia's iteration is, I have to say, a good one. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both wired and wireless, are standard in the hybrid, and the integration of smartphone mirroring is seamless. It connects every single time, even wirelessly, and we experienced zero dropouts during our time with the Sorento Hybrid. I can't say that for every car I've driven with the technology. This little panel here is a touchscreen that you can access your infotainment touchscreen, but if you want to change climate settings, just hit that little fan there, and it becomes a fully fledged climate control. Simple. There's plenty of storage in here, including this nicely padded lid that hides a, a large central storage bin with a handy little tray that you can put your wallet or keys in if you want. Uh, there's a little pocket here, um, ideal for putting your key in, pair of cup holders, a wireless charging pad for your smartphones, and the door pockets are generous and can easily accept bottles. Driving position is good. Seats are, as I've already said, are electrically adjustable. Height, reach, tilt, whatever you want. Steering wheel can also be adjusted fore and aft as well as up and down. So finding the driving position, the ideal driving position is a cinch. The view out the front is good. There's a head-up display there, which uh, adds some extra vital information when you're driving. And overall, you've got a really nice commanding lookout over the road. This panoramic roof is standard in the GT Line Hybrid. It adds some much needed light to the cabin, which uh, lifts the overall ambience so you don't feel like you're sitting in this darkened cocoon. The second row is nice and spacious as well. There's plenty of room back here, especially if there's no one sitting in the third row back there. Seats like they are up front are very comfortable, very supportive. Um, they slide forward to create more space for those in the back. The seat backs also tilt forward or backwards a little bit to again create more comfort for the second row passengers or more space for those in the back. There are air vents back here, no separate climate control, so you're at the whim of whoever's in front in charge of the, the climate. Uh, a couple of USB-C points, one here and one here in the seat backs, map pockets, cup holders in this fold down armrest and two more cup holders, one in each of the doors. So you can have two drinks on the go if you want. Uh, the door pockets can take smaller bottles. There's plenty of room under the front seat for your toes. Knee room is generous, leg room is great. Headroom, fantastic, even though there is this uh, 
panoramic roof, which does impinge a little bit, but uh, even the tallest people should find it pretty comfortable back here. It really is a comfortable place uh, for longer trips, uh, certainly for two people. The person stuck in the middle might be a little bit put out as this seat back is quite firm. Um, however, there is no transmission tunnel to speak of, so at least they'll have plenty of foot room. But as a long distance tourer in the second row, this is a nice place to spend some time. As you can see, the third row is okay in terms of space, providing your second row compatriot moves their seat forward a little bit. With the seat pulled right back, there's virtually no leg or knee room for adults, but in this position, it's okay. The downside is because of the, the floor and the low seat base position, your legs are up high like this and it's not very comfortable. Wouldn't recommend this for adults for a long road trip, say, but it's fine for a, a, a short emergency trip where seven people need to be ferried around. My 10 year old though, loved it back here. In fact, she preferred to sit in the third row even when there was no one in the second row. Maybe she was trying to get away from my bad dad jokes. Jokes like, I went to the zoo, all it had was one dog, it was a shit zoo. But she preferred the third row and she found it quite comfortable. She is small though, so bear that in mind. Amenities back here are actually pretty good. Usually the third row gets ignored in these types of vehicles, but that's not the case with this car. There's a little storage pocket here, climate controls and an air vent here, USB charging and a cup holder. Overall, I'm pretty comfortable back here, although the lack of space would start to make its presence felt on longer road trips. Ideally, this is best safe for kids or people of smaller stature. Out back, a powered tailgate reveals the Sorrento's cargo area. Kia quotes 179 litres with all three rows of seats in play. Folding that third row away opens up 608 litres of luggage space, while stowing the second row liberates a total of 1,996 litres. Unusually in this day and age, and commendably, the Sorrento Hybrid comes with a full-size alloy spare wheel for some much-needed peace of mind when you're road tripping with the family on board. Nice one, Kia. A 1.6-litre turbocharged four-cylinder petrol engine is paired with Sorrento's excellent hybrid system. Kia quotes combined outputs of 169 kilowatts and 350 newton meters, which is decent enough for most situations. And while on paper that does seem like it lacks a little bit of oomph. It's actually, in the real world, quite a sharp little tool. That When you combine it with the, the hybrid drivetrain with a small electric motor, it can, when you need it to be, be quite sprightly. Of course, being a hybrid, what you really want is for the electric motor to be doing the bulk of the driving. And in that regard, the Kia Sorento comes out okay. It's pretty sensitive to throttle inputs, and having the uh, battery power the motor for anything above about 20 k's an hour at takeoff is next to impossible. You'd have to breathe on the accelerator to get the hybrid system to work as intended. But if that sounds like a criticism, it really isn't because where the Sorento's hybrid system really starts to shine is in that range between 40 and 80 kilometers an hour. At that speed, which is, let's face it, what most of us are doing in an urban environment, the hybrid system is excellent. And that pays dividends at the Bowser. Fuel consumption is rated at 5.4 litres per 100 kilometres on the combined cycle, according to Kia. That's for the front-wheel drive model that we have here. The all-wheel drive variant is slightly thirstier, with a claimed consumption figure of 5.7 litres. Our week with the front-wheel drive Sorento Hybrid saw an indicated 6.4 litres, you can expect to average around a thousand kilometers of driving between refills based on our own week-long testing. A highlight was one particularly long drive, about 150 k's non-stop, where we saw an indicated 5.2 litres per 100 kilometers. That's an excellent return and exactly what buyers of hybrids are expecting. One of the highlights of the Sorento Hybrid, as it is with just about any Kia in Australia, is the local suspension tune. Kia's engineers go to great lengths to ensure that the suspension of any Kia sold in Australia, just about any Kia that is, is suitable for our roads and conditions. This one is no different. The ride over patchy surfaces like we encounter just about every single day on our roads is exemplary, while navigating larger obstacles such as speed humps or driveways 
Seize the Sorrento, despite its almost 2,000 kilo curb weight, settle down really nicely. There's no wallowing, no porpoising. It just climbs over the obstacle and settles straight back down onto its uh, wheels. The steering is nice and direct. There's no vagueness on center. It responds to even the minutest of inputs. Um, and that just inspires confidence while also making it easy to point it in the direction you want the car to go. One of the pleasant surprises of the Sorento for me is it doesn't feel like a large SUV. I know it is with seven seats and measuring, I think over 4.8 meters long, but it seems to shrink around you. It, it feels smaller than it actually is. The Sorento Hybrid does come with Kia's full suite of safety assist systems. And for the most part, they work really well. They're nicely calibrated. There's no overly intrusive interventions Although speed sign recognition, we're sounding like a broken record. It doesn't work in the way it's intended. Not always picking up the right speed sign and beeping incessantly in, by telling you that you're speeding even though you're not. You can switch it off, of course, um, but it takes about six or seven presses on the touch screen. Or you can do what I did, which is press the star button here and set up a custom screen. That way it only takes about three presses. The caveat there is you need to do it every single time you get in the car and it can get a little bit annoying. Overall, the driving experience in the Sorento Hybrid is a pleasant one. Sure, there are some minor quibbles, but as a hybrid and as a seven seat SUV, the Sorento really does work as intended. It's got a comfortable ride, it's easy to drive and economical at the fuel pump. What more could buyers want from a hybrid? So that's the Kia Sorento GT Line Hybrid, which is a very good large SUV. But more importantly, it's a really, really good hybrid. But we can't help but think a more affordable entry level variant would do well for the company. After all, ten dollars to $15,000 would buy you a lot of petrol. If you want to find out more, head on over to drive.com.au for the full written review. And as always, hit like on this video and subscribe to our channel.